Good afternoon. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would like to thank PSS Greitech for inviting us here to this important Bing Conference, international conference. Um, before we start, I just want to introduce myself and uh, my company. I am uh, Christian Palaria. I am passionate about technology and, of course, about BIM technology. I am using BIM uh, from uh, 2006 7 I am specializing in BIM technology and in managing projects uh, from an architectural point of view, um, focusing in coordination with the structural and MEB projects. In uh, 2018, one year ago, I took uh, PMP certification, uh, and uh, across my life, I had also the opportunity to be a CEO of a small company, Italian company, um, which turnover was about uh, one million per year. Well, Jodata is a big company engaged in uh, since uh, 1984 in the design of underground works. Uh, today it is active in more than 50, 25 countries and uh, we are specialized in tunneling, tunneling and infrastructural projects. We uh, supervise then the design and or the, construction of, the construction of over than 4,000 kilometers of tunnels and uh, three th more than 3,000 projects uh, worldwide, focused on in um, metro, railways, roads, hydroelectric power plants, geology, and environment. Well, why I am here today and I am not here today? Uh, I am not here today here to boring you with another boring conference, or at least I hope, and I am here to explain, first of all, how difficult is uh, dealing with BIM in an underground uh, project, so in a, in a company that develop underground projects and infrastructure projects. Why? First of all, because we don't have a single element located in a specific position. There is a nigh relationship with the ground. We have to deal with many software that have to be interfaced and we have to force them because many times we have to ask to the software to do something that it, not, it, it is not able to do. Uh, so we have to program. And above all, we have to deal with people. So the change is uh, very challenge. Many people tell you that uh, we have, why, we to, why we have to change, why, why we have to switch to BIM software instead of CAD because, BIM, uh, because we are able to use CAD. And uh, another important sentence that I heard across last years is BIM will do everything automatically. It is not true. BIM doesn't do anything automatically. You must know the software, you must know the limits of the software, and then BIM can do something automatically, or most of things automatically. <laughs> well, going deep to our uh, topic today, I'm going to show you how we realized the, uh, an hydroelectric power plant project. It's a very complex project because we have a lot of elements and each element had to be modeled and designed with different softwares. So this, is, this was the first important challenge for us. First of all, we had to realize using Civil 3D, job site platform, coffer done, and plunge pool. Then we switched to another software, Revit and Rhino series, to realize the dam, powerhouse, and transformer soul, and stop locks. And then, for linear elements, such as um, tunneling, we had to realize the project using Civil 3D, of course, but then we switched to Dynamo and Python to realize the model inside Revit, just to make and put information inside that. Well, what is, Di what, what is Dynamo? Well, uh, it has been presented <laughs> just a couple of minutes ago, but I would just, uh, just like to state something more. Uh, Dynamo is uh, a visual programming language. It is very simple because there are a lot of nodes, compiled nodes, so we can just 
uh, choose the nodes that we have to 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 use, connect all nodes uh, with the logical connection laces, and then we can realize the whole automatic process in the, inside our model. But what happens if we don't have the nodes that can do what we have to do? We have to program it. So we have to switch to Python, and we have to realize our custom node. This is a little bit different from, from Dynamo because we have to be able to write the code. So we have to know the syntax of the, uh, of the program language. Python is a simple program language uh, object oriented. And the most important thing that we can do with Python is enter inside the software with Revit API. So we can, broke, uh, we can break sorry, any barrier that is located between us and the software. And we can do whatever we want. Well, how we use Dynamo and Python? Uh, we realized a workflow, a code, in which just taking some information, uh, input information from an Excel file, JSON, or MySQL, QL, we can realize the tunnel. So we, we start, sorry. So we start uh, with an, uh, an, uh, an input data Excel file, for example, in which we add X, Y, Z, coordinates that arrive from the alignment and the other, other parameters that uh, are important to model the, the, the TBN tunnel. Just reading the coordinates, we are able to recreate uh, the alignment inside Revit, Revit and put each ring of the TBN tunnel in the right position and with the right location, with the right uh, uh, um, rotation, sorry. This is the rotation of the, of the element. Yes, because these colors are not casual. This color represents the correct position of the ring and the correct rotation of that. But more, moreover, the most important thing is that when we are modeling it, we can also write information inside each ring such as installation date, ring number, segment position, stationing, the damages that we have find, found inside the construction, during the constructions. The, and then also the horizontal deviation, vertical deviation, just to make a comparison between the design and the construction. Well, we can deal with uh, Excel file, JSON file that are file located in, the, in your local machine. But what about deal with cloud-based file. We can just create our custom node with Python, connect it, the model to the database, to a MySQL database, and just write all information inside MySQL or simply reading that. This is another kind of tunnel. This is not TBM. This is traditional tunnel. The workflow talking in about Beam is completely the same. Nothing has changed. Only one thing. While in a, a mechanized, mechanized excavation, we have a ring that has got the same, uh, the same excavation step because it is prefabricated, so we, it is the same. In this case, it is not the same. It is changing depending on geological and geotechnical condition. So we have to read the excavation step and design the model depending on that. And also, of course, write that inside the properties. But the most important thing that I would like to state now is that we can, well, sorry, we can write all information we need. So in this case, for example, we wrote the number of supports. So we can have a very low model. So we, the, the, the model is not TV, but is, it is rich of information. All information are very useful to realize a bill of quantity. When we have to realize the model, so when we have to model each element, each support, in uh, Powerhouse and the, in the, the um, uh, Transformer Soul. Why? Because there is a lot of interconnection between uh, many caverns, and the only way to check the interference between the supports was to model them. But you can imagine easily that modeling all these elements by hand is crazy. So we realized another Dynamo code. 
just clicking on the surface, I'm putting a lot of, of parameters, X support distance, Y support distance, support length, support radius, material and typology, and so on. We can have our model design it automatically. And above all, we can write inside each element whatever you want, diameter, length, name, typology of the, of the support. Uh, all information important, many, very important for the bill of quantities, which is this. And of course, the model is very important also for exporting the two-dimensional drawings for the client. Well, this is, uh, we have to also to model the turbines. That is a very complex model. We model it uh, using rhinoceros, and then we import it into Revit, just to have a model that could be uh, informated. So we, we could put information inside the model using Revit. And then we use Ravi's work to manage the project and also, of course, to realize the bill of quantities uh, of the whole project. Because many, I, I told you before that the whole project was realized using many, many software, not only Revit. So the Ravi's work is a common platform that allows us to import, um, to import all models coming from different softwares. And here we can read whatever we want, above all, Bill of quanti above all quantity of materials. But Navi's work is also important to realize 4D and 5D simulation. We can realize a model connected automatically with the plan, with the Microsoft project plan, uh, giving the connection uh, through uh, specific parameters that we have to, to decide before the, 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 rising, the, the, the realization of the model. Uh, but what I want to show you now is another workflow, which is a little bit different, because uh, we started with the Civil 3D era now, we divided the excavation into different portions, and we split the total bar of the excavation into the, this different uh, excavation uh, portion using VBA code inside Excel. So just to, sh just to show you that there are many, many, many ways to uh, achieve an object, an, ob an objective, sorry. Well, I finished my presentation about the um, hydroelectric power plant, but I would like just to show you something more. Um, so I would like to show you many experiences we had across last years, totally different one from the other, uh, very, very quickly. Um, this project is located in, this station is located in Santiago del Ch of Chile. Uh, this station was built in 2004 with an empty space realized for the future cross line that we had to design uh, just a couple of, year, of years ago. Uh, in the first instance, we had to realize a survey. You can imagine th this is a very complex geometry, so you can imagine that with the traditional CAD survey, uh, it was quite not possible, it was crazy. So we decided to use a laser scan survey imported, we imported it inside Revit, we model the whole station depending on that, and that day we, are able, we, were, we were able also to, okay, we were able also to uh, use in phases inside Revit. So the gray color is the existing station, the red color is the project, and the yellow color is all demolishing. Well, another experience is uh, about the cut openings. So this is just a portion of the station. In the big station, we had a lot of tunnel, uh, a lot of ducts and a lot of pipelines that intersect uh, many, many um, walls, architectural walls. So we had to create void. How we can do that? We use a plugin to do all cut openings, and when the plugin didn't work properly, we realized a dynamo code as, as always. Well, another important project is a station located in, in Russia. This is in Russia, in uh, Moscow, sorry. Uh, this is a very complex station. We are managing that st this station from architectural, structural, and MEP point of view. But what I wanna, what I wanna show you today about this station is how we realize, how we realize the, the structural model and how we imported it inside robot. So this is a very complex structure. 
These are columns, non, are not vertical columns. So we had to realize all the project, all the structural model, uh, paying many attention to the analytical model, to the connection with nodes, between nodes, and to con the connection between uh, plate elements. And then we imported inside, inside robot, and then we calculated it. Another experience we had was about uh, the abutment of a bridge and the rebar of, the, of that abutment. We are talking about uh, uh, 60 abutments. It, there were, in this project, there were about 35 bridges, so 60 abutments, uh, very similar between themselves. So we decided to create a prototype, just one family, parametric family, and then we realized the rebar inside that. So at the end, we're just changing the parameters, the thickness of the wall, the height of the wall, the dimension of the um, foundation, most rebars, not all, most rebars change it. So I would just, just like to state what I was talking about before. Not all is automatic. You have to be careful about that. Sophistic is very powerful to create also the shop drawing, so the tiling of rebar. And we had experience also in uh, uh, geological uh, modeling. We are using LeapFrog. We put just all information about the investigation, and LeapFrog is able to uh, interpolate all information and create a stratigraphy. We have, to just, we have just to put our model inside that and to verify all critical points. What we are doing now, doing now and uh, unfortunately I can't show you right now because I, we are studying that, is a new code that is able to recognize the, the stratigraphy, recognize the characteristic of that, geological and geotechnic, is able to cross, to make the, 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 to find the intersection between the stratigraphy and the model and is able to show you what, what are the critical points. So in this case, it is not very, very important because this is just a, a single element. But what about a very long element like an alignment, like a tunnel, like 20 kilometers of tunnel? If there is something that can do you for you automatically, it's very, very good, right? So. Finally, our last experience is about design the ring, design the segments of the ring. We are as a plugin inside Inventor, just putting all information inside the plugin, we can obtain the 3D model as output with all details. I don't know if you can show, if you can see that, but there are a lot of details here, and of course we can realize also the two-dimensional drawing for prefabrication. Well, I have finished my presentation about our experiences. I would just like to, um, to, to show you other two topics. Um, the first one is about classifiers. We talk about classifiers in the first step of this presentation. Um, unfortunately, we didn't use classifiers right now. Uh, and this is a huge problem for us because um, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the project, we usually define the classification with the client. We usually define how to call the family, how to call the parameters, which parameters we need, and so on. Uh, so at the end, uh, we can deliver the project, but at the end, only us and our client can read the project. So we are just considering to switch to a standard international classifier uh, in future projects, so in uh, right now, and probably we will uh, we are using Kobe Kobe standard for next project, which is a big project in which they are asking us to realize a very a very uh, big project and a, a high level of development because they want to use the the model for maintenance during operation and. Finally, then I have finished, I, I, I promise you. Uh, future suggestion, decision making, machine learning, and big data. We are talking about big data day by day. Big data are coming, are here, around, around now, around, around us, and they're coming. And what we can do with big data will come, really. In our core business, 
we are thinking to use big data and machine learning technology to develop a new decision-making automatic process in tunnel excavation without use empiric solution uh, that we are using right now. Well, I have finished my presentation. I would just, just like to state one thing more. All things you have seen today have been not done only by me. There is a very huge group, a very huge uh, team behind all this, which is Geodata. And I would like to thank all my colleagues and all my uh, ex-colleagues to have helped me to do all this and to achieve all these objectives. And of course, thank you so much to everybody of you about, for uh, your attention. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much.